Welcome back to the Real Burbs of Harford County. I'm Bob Zanlungo. I'm Kelly Turner. And we're excited today because we have our first guest on the podcast, Jackie Post, who is the founder of the Scoop Glastonbury. Welcome, Jackie. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. We're excited to have you here. So before we get started chatting with Jackie, we've got a couple kind of fun things going on locally that we were going to talk about. The first thing is Citizen Chicken and Donuts. Have you guys been to Citizen Chicken and Donuts? Not yet, but I follow them closely and it looks amazing. Yeah, the donut chicken concept. This is kind of an interesting one. I don't know how I feel about this. Like, <laughs> is it, I love donuts. Mm-hmm. Like, I love donuts. We, I know this. I love donuts. And I love chicken. But I'm just picturing like a Boston cream with a chicken nugget on it. And I don't like I don't get I don't know what's happening. Yeah, I love I'm going to agree with you there, but don't knock until you try it. Right. Try it, oh, no. Right? Ch- yeah. We'll be there. Don't, well, and don't let's worry. be honest. Right. So the head chef is Van Hurd of Hell's Kitchen fame. Um, and for those of you who follow the Connecticut restaurant scene, Van has really put his hand in some amazing stuff. So he was there at the beginning of Salulitas, which is an amazing restaurant here in Glastonbury. Then he moved to Tano Prime and he opened Tano Prime, which is like a high end barbecue place. And now we are at the Harford Baking Company's Citizen. Where is it opening? West Harford. West Harford. Yeah. Okay. In the old, well, not the old, the very first location of Harford Baking Company. Oh. They swapped that over. Okay. Over on New Park? I think on New Park, yeah. Yep. I'm ready for, I saw on Instagram, they fabulous social media they've got going on yeah. is the uh, maple bacon donut. I don't know. We might, I might have to try that one. <laughs> no <laughs> chicken, just maple bacon. Just maple bacon. Like the maple donut at the, the biggie. The biggie. <laughs> yeah. Bob's favorite food on the planet is the maple donut in Vermont, right? Yeah. The Vermont building. The Vermont oh. building at the biggie. Oh. It's like the number one. But still my beating heart. <laughs> still my beating heart. What other fun stuff's happening? Another pokey restaurant's opening, one in Manchester. There's one over in West Hartford by West Farms right now. So that's, I do eat pokey. I love it. That's raw fish. That's right? raw fish. Yeah, no. No, that no. does not work for you. Nope, does not work for me <laughs> at all. So I'll eat sushi, but it has to be... Like in something? You know, well, I guess it's technically not sushi, but I'll eat the rolls with like avocado or, you know, shrimp that's cooked. But I won't eat anything raw. That is you, too, for the most part, right, Bob? No, I mean, I've, you know, I like a spicy tuna roll like the rest of them. I'm not a, like, is it nigiri? Yeah. You know, with the, like, piece of fish over the rice. Like, oh, no. I don't no, know. I'll eat everything, yeah. all of the above in any fashion, sashimi, I'd give it to me, all of it. I want to like it. I do. <laughs> but I just don't. See, that's one of the things we're really lucky about here in the Hartford area is if you are a sushi lover, man, we've got you covered. Like, yep. Mingung here in Glastonbury, all the Ginza and Fang restaurants, Saki, Sakura. There's so many options. You are a well-read sushi girl, I love sushi. (laughs) I will tell you, so I went to the University of Hartford, which is the original Ginza's right down the street from, and that was like a weekly visit. And I ate shrimp tempura every single time. And I'm like, "Mm, I don't need sushi. And then my husband, Corey, when we were dating, was like, you have to try it. It's delicious. And I was like, I don't know. The texture's weird. And then I ate it, and now, like, I'm a devoted at least once a week sushi fan. I would probably eat it every day if somebody would let me and I could afford it. Yep. But yeah, it's probably my favorite food. Yeah. My body just kind of like rejects it. It's, it's like, weird. no, literally, it's gone down and come right back. Oh. Up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it is not fun. But pokey is like, so it's the Hawaiian kind of version. They're generally like rice bowls. And yeah, it looks really good. So I'm excited yeah. to try that one out. So a little real estate news. This was my one interesting tidbit for today is in February, 42% of transactions in Hartford County for single family homes closed for more than the list price. Wow. Wow. 42%. That's crazy. Isn't that a crazy statistic? I feel like it's tough to get a house right now. So that's exactly why they're going for above list is that there is so little inventory on the market that when a house pops up, People are in bidding wars, yeah. three, four, five, 10, 15, 20 people putting in offers. And then you see that price go up and up and up. So we have 42%. And then the other interesting fact is Burlington, Connecticut had the largest increase in sales in Hartford County. They are up 50% from last year, Burlington, Connecticut. It is beautiful out there. I have a friend who lives out there in a development that was an old farm mm-hmm. and it is like stunningly beautiful. Is it on the lake? That's what I hear is um, one of the big hot places over Oh, I, hers was not on the lake, but every time I would go there, it was like the most peaceful drive and winding roads, and it was beautiful. Is this so, where all the New Yorkers are going, maybe? Maybe. They're all going to Burlington. 
The other interesting um, tidbit is that vacation homes are also selling like hotcakes. So there's a huge increase in business in states like Rhode Island, Vermont, Florida, and South Carolina. So I wonder if that's really due to this, you know, people aren't traveling, so they still want a vacation. So they're looking for their own safe COVID havens, vacation homes. But yeah, I understand the the Rhode Island market is a very hot one right now. And I'm going to guess there's a lot of Connecticut people into that. For sure. Buying their right Narragansett Beach homes and it's perfect spot. I love it. So that's kind of all of our news for today. So Jackie, we are excited to talk a little bit about the scoop. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm so honored. I'm very excited <laughs> that you're here. Kind of tell us a little bit about the story of how did the scoop begin? Yeah. So the scoop started, I'm in my fourth year and it was just kind of an idea I had for a really long time and never did anything about it. But I was at the time working for NBC for a show called Connecticut Spotlight. I was the host of that show. So I worked with a lot of business owners where I would do two minute interviews and tell their story and talk about how they started. And I just really developed this love for the story behind the business. Just, I think it's so courageous. I think it's so inspiring. And so paired with that was my curiosity of what was happening in town. And in Glastonbury, you know, there's always like this segment of the population that knows what's happening. (laughs) And so I thought, you know what, I'm going to just start finding out what's happening using my reporter skills and just went from there. And yeah, I'm surprised at the takeoff of it. I think people just, there was a niche and people really just love knowing what's happening. That's what people always say to me. I just lo- I feel like I know what's happening now, you know? <laughs> Listen, it's the Monday morning special, right? Yeah. First thing I did it this morning. First thing that you do, you open it up and you're like, ooh, what's on the scoop this week? <laughs> What's happening? Your husband's on the scoop I know, this week. I saw that. I was like, oh, I didn't even know that. <laughs> I loved it. Loved his story too. That's great. So how much scoop do you get a week and how do you filter through what's real and then what's just people? The rumor mill. Yeah, well, that's been interesting. Obviously, I try to get multiple sources. So that's one thing. It's curated. So I pick four stories every week that I think will resonate with my audience, which my audience is essentially me and Kelly, you know, (laughs) moms with young kids. And so I just choose the stories that I think will resonate or things that I find unique or interesting is what I tell people. And that's all done by just making sure that I have the right sources and that it's not just one source. And if people say to me, can you check on this? I'll check on it. But I don't always get confirmation. So I have to wait a little while. Like the edge has been a been a huge (laughs) topic of conversation and probably my most frustrating story, to be quite frank. For the listeners, what would the, the edge, edge is that gym that's behind Chili's. So the space went up for lease recently. And all I know right now is that it's not confirmed that it is not coming. That's all I know. It's not confirmed that it is not coming, at least from my sources. So I guess I could understand in a pandemic, you know, gyms weren't open. So it's, yeah. it was like absolutely the worst time probably totally. for them to launch. So they opened so many locations in 2019 that I think they had to like literally reevaluate and say, OK, what are we doing here? So we'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll wow. see what happens with that. What has been your biggest scoop? So what was the one that had the most attention and traction for you? My biggest local scoop was the brewery. Oh, yeah. OK. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That like launched my site, basically. Which is Hops on the Hill? Yes. Hops on the Hill. OK. Yes. Thank you. It was obviously buzzing around for a while because there were different proposals for that. But when it was approved, I had it first, I think. So people, it was shared like over a hundred times on Facebook and people love beer. They do. And what (laughs) a spot Mm -hmm. it is. We were discussing vacation homes. You feel like you're on vacation at Hops on the Hill. You don't really know you're in Little Glastonbury. It's so great. And they just got a new brewer. He used to work for Burnside in East Hartford. So he has a lot of experience and he's been brewing up some new beers. So, so and out. they're having a vendor day coming up soon, I think. Yes, like, they are. I just did that. What is it? May oh, 1st? It, uh, yes, May 1st. May 1st. You're right. Okay. Yeah. Hopefully it's a nice weekend like this past weekend yeah. we just had. And Ops on the Hill was probably bumping this weekend. It was. I was following them on Instagram, thinking to myself, I should be down there instead right? it's of probably you know. so beautiful. <laughs> yeah. So Kelly asked what your biggest scoop was. What was like your scoop that was the biggest pain in the rear? Oh, like the worst scoop I ever did? 
by far the one that caused, I shouldn't say the worst scoop, the one that caused the most controversy and... Um, strife and drama. Yeah, strife and drama for me specifically was the Puppy Palace. Okay. I get there's like high emotion there, but I'm not sure if it was the right decision. I ended up deleting the post because there were a lot of people messaging me personally and attacking me. For our listeners, Puppy Palace is a, a, pet, store. a pet store, Door. essentially. Puppy store, yeah. yeah. Over next to Sherwin-Williams. And they are open. It was just one of those things where it hit the wrong nerve and you know people just didn't like it. It was a learning process for me in terms of how I handle things, but it just was very negative. Like the energy was very negative there. So, well, and that's tough because you're reporting about businesses, whether you agree or disagree or like or dislike. Right. Or, that's really tough because people do like kill the messenger. You were the messenger and they were not happy about the message, but you had nothing to do with the message. Yeah. It was fascinating, actually. Yeah. And I think that must be hard because it's the scoop. You're just talking about a business that's opening. It's not Jackie Post's commentary hour. Right. You know what I mean? So it's like, businesses that people like and don't like open all the time. Right. So how do you trying to navigate that and be well I think fair I balanced? think what bothered me was not so much look, you can just disagree with it opening all you want. You can comment on a post all you want. It was literally personal attacks Ugh. that were made to me personally, which I don't know. Maybe people don't realize. Maybe they think I'm like a corporation or something. <laughs> like, I have I'm no idea. I am a, I town. am one person. So, so that was really hard and it was just a growing pain, I guess, but definitely learned from it for sure. Cool. Any new scoops, any new things? Jackie, is there something you'd like to break today? There's no breaking scoop today. Today in my scoop was Zinnigan's, the Belgian waffle place. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's going to hopefully open in May. They were kind of sidelined, I think by COVID, but I popped in there. I snuck in there. The, the contractor <laughs> was like, oh, you can take a look. It is stunning. Is it really? Yes. I'm so excited to have like another little networking spot with good coffee. And it's I don't know. I, I guess I kind of need to know what a real Belgian waffle tastes like. Apparently there is a difference. The founders are from Belgium. The local spot is owned by a couple from Farmington, but the founders of Zinnigan's in general are from Belgium and they could not find what they felt was a real Belgian waffle. And so they just started like a food truck up in Massachusetts and then it expanded into a brick and mortar and here we the are. rest is history. Here we are in Glastonbury. I'm assuming you can do waffles all sorts of ways, right? Like from savory to sweet to all, oh, yeah. all sorts of things. Yeah, okay. you should see their menu. I mean, it looks divine, cool. you know? Anything and everything. Not good for you, for sure. I'm sure it's, <laughs> but delicious. So sure. like most things in life, yeah, in moderation. Exactly, in, in moderation. moderation. Exactly. That's one of my favorite parts of living in Glastonbury, and I feel moderation. so spoiled. Moderation, no, is the amazing places to eat here in yes. Glastonbury. We are so spoiled. Like I feel like I never actually have to leave town because you're like, what would you like? Fancy seafood? We've got that. Max Fish, a great steak? We've got that. Jay Gilbert's. You know, I, like whatever it is, it's here. If there was a Target or Trader Joe's here, I don't think I'd ever leave town. Mini Target. Mini Target. This I have been dream. telling people this forever. A mini Target is what we need. They have one in West Hartford. Yes. We need one in Glass. I would die. So there would be a lot of controversy. Get there, out. <laughs> there would be. I know. It's surprising, isn't it? You know, a big box store coming yeah. to town. Yeah. But wouldn't it be so convenient? Well, let's say let's say this. So I'm going to age myself here. And Jackie's also from town. So she knows. Do you remember Ames? Yes. You used to be able to go to Ames. What do you need in Ames? I need shoes. Yes. I need clothing for my kids. That I was need housewares. Was that where Michael's is? Yes. Yes. That's yes. right. It was like Bradley's or Cal. It was like one of those. And you just yep. went and you- Can I let you in on a secret? What? Ames was in East Harford. Okay, right. Well, yeah, correct. technically. That's like that. That's that gray area. Technically. That whole zone over there. That's it's, really everybody. Can I tell you? The building across from Nardelli's where it was actually just painted. Yes, um, yes. It was just they have new owners. That is in Glastonbury. Correct. Oh, that's the, the, line. the and then, town line. Well, you right know that. The, the town line goes right through the driveway. Of course you yeah. know this. Cause... Yeah. So where's Home Depot? Partially Glastonbury, partially oh, East Hartford, I did believe. I know that. Well, Ames was the bomb. And I, the two stores that I miss the most in Glastonbury, this is, again, age myself and Are we going to go on? Are we I gonna... am, is Ames and the Weather Vane. 
The weather vane. The oh weather my gosh, vein. the orange boxes with the rooster. The weather vane. You have no idea what the weather vane is, do you? Wouldn't you be scared if I did? But probably. The weather vane right. was a clothing store. It was in the Bertucci's Plaza. It was hot in the 80s. It was super hot in the 80s. It's where you would go to get your like cute outfit for like mm-hmm. school dance or you're going out or whatever. And it was amazing. Do you we remember used... the orange box? Like yes. if it was a gift box? With yeah. the weather vane right on it. It yep. was the coolest store, man. We need some retail though, I think. I would agree with that. You know, that's probably the thing I think that we're missing the most. Yeah. And we used to have a lot of it. Like, remember, we used to have Gap and Express yep, and I all know. of those sort of stores. I know. And there's not a and lot like of Like Somerset West. Square, right? I mean, there's, yes. there's yes. a bunch of... I used of... to work at Nine West. Did you? I did. Nine West. There was Victoria's Secret. That was a I recent... Know. Recently left. But yeah, we don't have a whole lot of like yeah. regular retail. Um, If you didn't see my scoop, I think it was last week or the week before, there's that boutique going in. There's a new clothing, women's oh, clothing boutique going into Nana's. Oh, so. I do love Nana's. I know. She's retiring. So she it's was not like a bad story, but she is a sweet, sweet lady. I also feel like, because probably because I read your scoop, that there's a pop-up market this weekend. There is, yep. At, in front of Nana's, yep. right? Yep. Uh, on Main Street? Yep. Okay. Oh. So, yeah. that's th- can so I tell you? Some different vendors and, and whatnot. Did you see that on Small Business Saturday? They did one. It was so popular and amazing. Isn't that where our wreath came from? That's where I got our wreath from yeah. Barn Door Blooms. Yes. It was Barn Door Blooms. stunning. And we still have it on the, we took the holiday bow oh. off, but yeah, it's, we still have it. I got like a bunch of really fun, unique gifts that day. It was, it was Ooh. awesome. I yeah. did not go partially because so, I have, you know, a lot of children and think on the weekends, but think Mother's Day now. Ooh. So like that would be a good stop for Mother's Day, right? Ooh, yeah. Yes. Mother, yeah. Is Mother's Day really coming up? Are we really there? Well, not till May, but I'm just know. trying to prep everyone who... Listen, you know. it'll be here before you know it, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. Everything's going to be here before we know it. A week from this Thursday, it's April 1st. Oh, my God. Crazy. Yeah. Oh, my God. Well, we, think, we had a real winter this winter. Of yeah. course, the one year we didn't really want to have a real winter because I know. of COVID. We haven't had like a good winter in a couple of years, and there was... It, I know. It was wintry. It certainly was. Shut your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Don't curse Do you want to move to Florida? <laughs> no. This is the real burbs of Hartford County. We are <laughs> discussing how amazing it is to live in Hartford County. Correct. In spring, it's supposed to be 60s this week. It's going to be glorious. Don't tempt you, the weather. You do know that with a... if you look at the 10 day forecast, there is, in fact, a mixed precipitation <gasps> Shh, event happening stop. on April 1st. Yes, it's a joke. <laughs> stop. Yeah. Horrible. Do you have any other uh, retro stories you'd like to talk about? Like I don't know. Caldors or Bradley's or Barker's <laughs> or what else? The only other thing I really miss in Glastonbury is the Friendlies. That's what, yeah. not because it was that delicious. I loved that place too. But again, from being from town, where did you go after every school dance? Yep. You went to Friendlies. That's yep. what, like middle school, I high know. school. That's what you did. I know. Well, at the end of high school, you moved to Chili's because that I was, was slightly say, classier. Um, recently, I took my kids to Chili's and... I used to go to Chili's all the time time. in high school. I mean, all the time. If we were going out to dinner, we'd go to Chili's. Chili's was like the hot spot. 100%. And I'm impressed that they're still there. And it's still busy. Yes. It's still busy in there. It just seems kind of crazy. Didn't you meet your husband at Chili's? No. Uh, uh, <laughs> Fridays. Friendly? I mean, friendlies. I yeah. did, yes. I mean, not uh, met him. You knew him from high I school, but high you, school. that was the first time you guys were out together. Yeah. Gotcha. Correct. But we were on a double date with other people. Oh, there oh, you go. Oh, that's <laughs> sweet. Just so you know, you never know what could happen. You never sweet. know what could happen. Yeah, no, friendlies was like the thing. Was it like Lady and the Tramp? Like you had the giant Jim Dandy and then you're like an house <laughs> met oh, over the sweet. spoon of ice cream? Absolutely not. <laughs> In no circumstance was that what it was like. But thank you for making this awkward. (laughs) All right. We'll be here all week. Yeah. Tip your waitresses. This is where we're at now. Okay. I'm trying to think of other scoop I can give you. But it's a little quiet, quite frankly. Like, Which isn't I think, a bad thing, right? No, I think things are moving a well, lot. A lot of businesses took like a little breather with all of yeah, this. Yeah, but waiting. I think like some of the development is on hold a little bit, but we'll see. There's all kind of things buzzing around, yeah. rumors. So Yeah, I think everything's true. been on hold for a year, right? Everybody's yeah. lives, all developments, yep. all sorts of things have just kind of been. We're waiting to kind of get past this. So. Yeah, see yeah. what it's going to look like. For but sure. yeah, there is. There's a lot of businesses that are empty right now that will be interesting to see it what will be. goes in their places as we go. But mm-hmm. I really will say I'm also very impressed with the restaurant community in Glastonbury, how just strong they were through all of this, how adaptable they were. And there were restaurants that I tried during COVID that I probably wouldn't have tried otherwise, but okay. they did like 
Pollo Guapo is one that they did such a great job at like the so takeout. Good. It's so delicious. But you would like, you'd order on toast and then you'd pull up. They would see you. They'd put it out, like bring it out to your car, put it in your, in yep. your window, walk away. Like they did such a great job. Another one is seed. Oh. It's literally my favorite. I love, I've never once had a bad meal there. I no. mean, it is just so good. Yeah, they do a great job. Yeah, great, they do a great, great. job. Uh, Ari and um, Todd. They're also the nicest people on the planet. The nicest people on the planet, for sure. I have a scoop hat that I bought at Seed. You do? I do. Oh my gosh, my I office. feel so amazing. I have a scoop hat and I bought it at Seed. I love it. So my husband's office is right across from Seed and... That was slightly problematic at the beginning when Seed first opened. Yeah. Because it was like, every week, what do you want? Let's go. So we should probably seed. tell people what Seed is. Oh, Seed oh, is. Oh, yeah. Like, how, but how do you even, it's bagels, but it's not bagels. Yep. It's the greatest it, place. They ever. call them Sandos. Sandos. Bagel Sandos. And it's just all these amazing sandwiches. Locally I've, sourced ingredients, yeah. local jam, local meat. Just open for breakfast and lunch. Yep. Right? yep. And it's still. Um, it's still to go right now, but yep. she said they'll reevaluate but i think they've got that like patio outside so you can sit and and honestly so the takeout model for them worked so well yeah like the same thing you ordered on the toast app they put it outside you pick it up you leave like yeah easy it's delicious and yep we are big seed fans here yeah yeah one of my faves my kids are spoiled now though because now we eat bagels from there and they're like when we give them other bagels they're like this bagel's really chewy and i'm like i know it's not a seed bagel like just eat your bagel <laughs> just be quiet you're spoiled it's lenders from the grocery store that's what mommy had time for today yeah <laughs> no, they're the best awesome so jackie where can people find you find the scoop how can we um get to well you? i'm on facebook i'm on instagram linkedin my website is the scoop shoot me a line anytime i love to hear from people i love scoop so if you have any scoop send it my way excellent well thanks for joining us jackie we Thank appreciate you. it this is the real burbs of hartford county you can find us on itunes spotify stitcher wherever else you get your podcast rate and review us give us a five-star rating and if you want to continue the conversation after the podcast you can find us on instagram at the real burbs of harford county or on facebook at the real burbs of harford county I'm Bob Sanlongo. Kelly Turner. This is The Real Burbs of Harford County.